Hello, welcome to our 2021 Mood Indigo events review. If you're new to our YouTube channel, please click like and subscribe. And feel free to add any comments, as long as they're nice ones, in the comments box. So yeah, what a year it's been. Yes, another one of those years, although a bit better than the year before, certainly better than the year before. I mean, it's half the gigs were live stream only, half the gigs were with an audience. Yeah. A bit up and down. Mm -hmm. So we started off in January with... Uh, the Art of the Trio. I did a trio with uh, uh, Nick Lena Webster and Ra Strangers. <laughs> February um, you did the music of Miles um, with Francesca Le Castro on guitar. Oh yeah that was his idea just to do Miles Davis stuff but um, slightly change the feels so you know instead of them being kind of just maybe as they were you probably know them as a swing tune or a bossa or something he changed around some of the feels um, and we did it without drums so it really worked quite well um and richard sadler as well and richard and and francesco played together loads and they've got you know really good bit of history <laughs> So the next one was March. Um, we decided to go for a slightly bigger band um, to do a quintet because um, I'd asked uh, Paul Silver and Lester Brown, who I played with at the Bull's Head uh, maybe the year before, um, and had a great gig. I think Matt Skeeping was on was on drums on that one too. Uh, it was such a great swinging gig, and those two had such great chemistry together, Paul and, and Lester. So we thought we'd do like a quintet and um, yeah, that was one of the most swinging, swinging gigs. Yeah, it was brilliant. Yeah, really went well. It was fun. Yeah. But that was it. You had to be socially distanced in that, didn't you? I did. We did. Yeah. You had to set it out really carefully, didn't you? That's right. And I tried to do that as well as, well, well I did it very, you know, I set it all out so everybody would be in camera shot. Everybody was socially distanced and um, it was it was quite funny because as soon as we started broadcasting and playing, um, old habits die hard. And um, Paul Lester was walking around telling us all, you know, what to do in the arrangement while we were playing. Yeah, and coming up really close to you. <laughs> say no, stay where you are. <laughs> but uh, it was all good in the end. And um, he worked he works in a school as a as a music teacher, and he was COVID tested pretty stringently. He knew the next day he was telling me. Um, yeah, it was great because I think his headmaster from that the school, from the school it happened to email everybody in the school. So he had a lot of people watching online. Yeah, students. And you, and you had to do well, students, fellow teachers. Yeah. And you had to do all the all the kind of giving everyone the giving code. Giving them the code, yes. Yeah, that's probably our best ever live stream audience actually. Well, that was great. Have to have them back again. We are having them back again. Yes, we are, aren't we? Yeah. Thank you. 
moving on a bit to the beginning of April, the 4th, we were still in lockdown. So we could still only do live stream concerts. So um, the next one you did was with Tom Smith. <laughs> some remote recording for Esther and do an EP with her That's right. and um, so we decided to do uh, the UP launch um, again it was a purely a live stream because we still couldn't get the audiences in no. and I think we definitely wanted to do it because it was out and I think the album needed uh, some sort of like launch or... yeah Esther's, Esther's really put together a good um, eclectic mix of songs no, she did a really, well, you both all did a good job, but I mean, she did a good selection. And, and one of your songs, too, your originals. A heart so true should never be left to run. Feel only the way that I feel. Luckily, they, they opened up again. Yes. Restrictions were lifted to a certain degree. So we could have uh, our first live audience back. Yeah. And who did we have? We had Magic Bish, fantastic guitarist. Polish, Polish guitarist, lives in France and Britain, is that right? Uh, I don't think he lives so much in France anymore. Um, oh, okay. But I think he was going between Poland and the UK. Okay. Um, yeah, and um, we had Mark Rose on bass for that one, and everybody's favourite drummer, Sophie, on yeah. drums. So the reason we came across that lineup is we'd done a, a, a you know, another one of those lockdown collaboration That's videos. That's right, yeah. Um, we decided to pay tribute to Chick Corea, and we did Eternal Child. Mm -hmm. And um, it worked really well, and all the different players sounded quite good together, even though it was on a, on a collaborative video. So I decided to keep the same line up and everybody was free to do that, to do the, the concert. <laughs> So when it came to our July concert, um, it clashed with the, 
the football final, the European football final, England versus Italy, I think it was. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole country had gone completely mad into football. And, well, uh, most of the country. Yeah, most of the country. Um, so we tried to we tried to reschedule the, the date, um, but that didn't really work out. So unfortunately, we couldn't get Leah Richardson, who was planned to play. Um, mm. But hopefully sometime maybe next year. Yes, yeah, because it was postponed and then he couldn't make it. Is that right? Yeah, the, the new date didn't work out. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. Yeah, I don't get it, people preferring football to live jazz. And then August. Um, so yeah, August was quite a busy month. We did a couple of things. Started off uh, with our kind of workshop and concert. Bandcraft for Singers oh, okay, with Kate yeah. Mullins. Yeah, and Kate was a brilliant teacher. Yeah. Great day. I think everybody really got loads out of it. Mm. Um, we did a little student concert before the evening concert with Kate. That's right. Um, and Kate invited a great sax player called John Shenoy to come just to, you know, uh, flesh out the kind of set. Mm. Um, and it was great. Yeah, she, she was great. He was great. I was running around making teas and coffees at the same time, so I missed some of it. But, um, but yeah, it was. It, everybody really enjoyed it. to the 21st of August where we did something totally different. We were asked by the people who run the Brecon Jazz Festival to um, do a Brecon London Jazz Day. Brecon Jazz Festival London Day, I think it was called, because of, the, because of Covid they couldn't have their usual festival in Brecon, a whole weekend in Brecon. So they spread it out through the month with different things on every weekend for the whole of August. And we were asked to do the London area. Well, I did the trio. Trio, yes. So the piano trio, piano, bass and drums. With Sophie Alloway again and yeah. um, Flo Moore on bass. Yeah. Uh, and it was in the discussion with Brecon, really, they, they kind of, um, we chose the lineup for that. Trio. And Rachel Cohen Quartet. Yeah. And then the final set at seven o'clock was the Edison Herbert Quartet, which was really excellent. But you sat in with them as well, didn't you? Uh, I sat in with them. Well, that wasn't my idea. <laughs> I was invited by Lynn in Brecon to do a song with them at the end of the night no pressure. Yeah, and we had the lovely Dealey Doobie with us for the whole day, helping to um, co-host. Co and she did a song at the beginning and you're with, with your set, didn't she? She did.
because you had COVID, our next one in September, again, September was another one where we did a couple of events, but our first one with Paul Booth, you had to watch from, from here, didn't you? From yes, home. I was just at the end of my lockdown, of my um, isolation, I think. Yes, so I just couldn't make it. I think I have, it was the following day I was allowed out. <laughs> but oh, so you missed it by one day? I think, I think so, yeah. Um, or maybe two days, but certainly I couldn't be there. It's the first one I've ever missed of, of the Sunbury ones, which were actually live. Um, yeah, so we had Paul Booth. Um, so I never get got to meet. <laughs> yeah, he was great, great player. Yeah, he was really good. Yeah. And the high, I think the highlight for me of that gig was when he was doing the uh, the the monkey drum. It's got an. It's also known as a monkey drum. It's also got a, a, another Brazilian name, and uh, it's this drum that's on a stick and it makes all this this funny sound. It sounds like a bit like a monkey, and he was imitating it on the sax, and it was really cool. I think yeah. everybody everybody was laughing. Again, September was another one of those months where we did two concerts because we uh, we did the opening up of the Riverside Opening Up Festival. We had Georgina Jackson, didn't we? Yeah, she was great. Vocals trumpet. and trumpet. Vocals and trumpet. And yeah. comedian. She was great. Nice mm. swinging gig. Really funny too. Someday when I'm awfully long When the world is cold I will feel a glow just thinking of you and the way you look tonight. Oh, but you're lovely with your smile so warm and your cheeks so soft. There is nothing for me but to love you and the way Your tenderness grows, tearing my fears apart. And that laugh that wrinkles your nose touches my foolish heart. All oh, lovely, never ever change. Won't you keep that breathless charm? Won't you please arrange it? Cause I love you and the way you look tonight. Right, well, our next concert, we, we went back to the lovely neighborhood cafe Yukari in Kew for the first time since pre COVID. Um, and we were meant to have Jack Jones on sax, but sadly he got COVID. Or he had to cancel on the day. He had to cancel at the last minute, but by luck. Because we'd done a My Life in Music with um, Brandon Allen recently, and also he was planning to play at uh, one or other events that didn't happen. Um, so I texted him, but he said he couldn't do it, but he was standing next to Quentin Collins because they were in France, and they'd just been playing with Kyle Eastwood as part of his tour. And he says, I'm not free, but Quentin can do it. And um, so, yeah, as Quentin flew in from France, he came and did um, Yukari, and it was a great, great evening. Straight there from... from Pretty the much. I mean, I think he had to do a bit of childcare. He brought his son along. That's right. He's brought his son along a couple of times, yeah. Yeah. Good to be back at Cafe Yukari. Great to see Keith and Yukari again. Yeah, it was great, yeah. Um, it was like we hadn't left, really. We've got to November now. 
and the first one, the one that um, somebody was celebrating, celebrating the late Michael Garrett, because it coincided with the 10th anniversary of his passing. So Nettie Robinson got in touch um, and kind of brought up the idea that it would be Michael's 10th anniversary. And um, yeah, so it was great to, to do that again with the members of the original Lyric Ensemble. So all the people that played were in Michael Garrett's Lyric Ensemble. Um, so they knew the pieces quite well and I had to get my head into some of his handwritten charts and decipher some of the funny way he wrote chords and things. Um, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was good fun. It was it was great. You great... did a brilliant job. Oh, thank you. Great um, um, repertoire for songs, and mm -hmm. and this time it was mainly songs. We did one. We did another Michael Garrett tribute about three or four years ago, and um, but this one focused more on the songs, and it's definitely the songs that Nettie sang because obviously she was the one who, who wanted to do the concert. Mm -hmm. um, I think on the previous one, she was having to learn songs that she never, she never used to sing. So mm -hmm. this one was the stuff that she did sing with Michael Garrett a lot. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was great. And um, Cece Byrne was there, took a, some nice photos. Mm -hmm. and did a photo story for London Jazz News, which yes, was nice. that's right. Yeah, it was a really great and very special night. And she's amazing, Nettie. Sunset's gone. Back down as a man's must do. Breathing deep in the dark, you hear Ben Webster's. So our second concert uh, back at Yukari was uh, with Gilad Axman, which was quite controversial, uh, to say the least. <laughs> it was. <laughs> um, poor Keith and Yukari came under quite a lot of pressure for some people that wanted, for some reason, for us to stop the concert. People well, we marching. know the reason why they wanted yeah, us to stop Yeah, we know the it. reason, but we won't but, go into um, it. But yeah. they actually marched in two or three people at least over the period running up to it, marched into the cafe and said, we think you should stop this concert. But they stuck to their guns. We all stuck to our guns. We we were not going to give in to bullies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, there was no way that concert, on my side, there was no way we were not going to do that. Um, no. It never crossed my mind to not do it. Um, and it was a great night. It was a fantastic night. Yeah. And everybody was on fire, and Keith and Yukari and, and the, the lovely staff there, they all loved it, didn't they? <laughs> Thank you. 
Christmas concert. Um, the last one of the year. Um, yeah. Um, uh, so the nineteenth this month. So we called it the Three Simons, and I came up with that idea because uh, I think it was on Facebook, and I kept seeing posts. Um, I think between Simon Spillett and Simon Allen or somebody, and Simon Bates would comment on it, and I was thinking, wow, there's all these saxophone players called Simon. And then I thought of the three tenors. I was thinking about something. I was thinking, what could we do for our Christmas ones to make it special? And I was thinking about the three the three tenors, you know, the operatic. Pavarotti, Domingo and Carreras. You just have a bit of a joke with it. It was a brilliant evening and they, they were really full on. The, the print, they all took solos each, didn't they? And they were all humorous. And it was so, such fun and some burning tempos. Uh, and then with some little Christmas quotes coming in and a couple of Christmas numbers. Yeah, and we managed to do our mince pies and more wine as we always do. Um, so it was great to be out. And again, we were kind of, you know, not quite sure if it was going to happen. Are they going to lock down again? Are they going to stop us? Um, because our one, you know, last year, our 2020 Christmas. Christmas one was, yeah, we had to. We had to go straight to the live stream. Live stream at yeah. the last minute, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. So it was great to actually finish the year with a proper gig. managed to do um, a couple of gigs at a new venue for us, uh, Delina in um, Shepherd's Bush Shepherd's Market, Bush, yeah. yes. So we did a couple that were really successful and um, we had Tommaso Storace for our first one. Yeah, and, and then great. Tony Woods for the next and one. And then Tony Woods for the next one. And the third there was amazing. And we carried on doing the um, My Life in Musics, so I did, did quite a few. I did some some with, as a live stream and also a kind of a few extras that I did kind of like pre-recorded. So I did Tony and Nettie um, as a pre-recorded one, as I did with Gilad Atzman again. Mm. Um, but I had some really good live streams with Marion Wyndham, um, Alan Barnes, uh, Brandon Allen, mm. uh, Tina May. That's right. Um, Esther Bennett. Simon Spillett? Uh, he was last year. Oh, was he? Okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, just, uh, and Jim Mullen. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it was great. And Jim, the Jim Mullen one was the first time we got an audience in to actually watch the That's chat right. as well, the concert and the chat. Mm. So we did it differently that way. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed those. I'm more of those to come next year as well. I need to um, pull my finger out and um, book up some people.
everything for this year now and we wanted to wish you a very happy new year and let's hope things get stay open throughout um, and most importantly we'd like to thank all our patrons who've helped us to keep going through, throughout the whole period and to all of you who have supported us in the audience or in any way at all on live stream um, so we hope to see you or, um, or that you'll join us online next year and wish you a very happy and healthy new year. Do so to that and um, don't forget to like, um, subscribe and comment and see you all next year. Mm -hmm.